Hello everyone and welcome back to the City of Thieves. When we last left off, we have um, finished clearing out Clog Street and the sewer beneath it and we managed to acquire uh, two more items that we needed, that we need for the final battle against Zembar Baun, the um, Silver Arrow and the Hag's Hair. And we have just re-emerged from the sewer and it seems that uh, something wicked is coming this way from the street. So we have two options to choose from. We could uh, continue walking around this uh, walking along this street, round the corner and confront whatever is coming or return to the junction and turn right. Um, and we are no cowards, but there is also no need for any, uh, you know, unnecessary confrontation. Um, I highly doubt that a lotus flower is coming along our way or a tattoo artist, the two things that we still need. So let's retreat, let's, let's select Tower Street and let's see what Tower Street has to offer for us. Just ahead of us on Tower Street, three men are involved in a fight. The two younger men appear to be attacking an older man with iron bars. Alright, that's not fu nice. Even if the old man wronged them, you know, this is not fair at least. So let's help out the old man. We draw our sword and rush to help the old man. He's lying on the ground and the, two, uh, the other two men are beating him and trying to take his leather bag. We call out and they turn to attack us. Okay, so it's clear that they are some kind of robbers. Yes, and they are stated to be robbers. Uh, bandits and we are doing a heroic or at least a good deed decent deed and these robbers are or at least the first one is relatively formidable with a skill of seven and stamina of eight but he stands no chance against our majestic broadsword and our wing wi winged helmet that we have acquired and yes no chance whatsoever the second robber is even more skilled but uh, is a bit less tough so Let's dispose of him just as effectively. Ow. Uh, that didn't work out perfectly. Ow. Alright, one more hit and he's down. And he's down. We have prevailed in our charitable deed, but now we are down to 14 stamina points, which is not that great. We walk over to the old man and help him to his feet. He is very grateful and offers to buy us a drink at a nearby tavern. Um, we could consume our last one and only portion of provisions left, but I don't want to waste it just yet. Uh, we're still kind of okay. I think we can survive another battle. Um, and I don't think that this man that we just saved is going to stab us in the back, so let's go for a drink. Uh, at the very least, we might learn something, you know, where a tattoo artist is, for instance. We follow the old man through the swinging doors of the Hog and Frog Tavern. He tells us to sit down at a small table in the corner while he shuffles over to the bar to buy the drinks. There are several shifty looking characters sitting at nearby tables, but they do not seem interested in us. Soon the old man comes back to the table carrying two wooden mugs filled to the brim with cider. Once seated, he opens his leather bag and places two small pots on the table. He opens one and rubs the white cream in the pot on his wounds. He smiles and tells us that he is a chemist by trade and that we should rub some of the cream on our wounds as well. We take his advice and are surprised to feel the healing effect of the cream work so quickly. We gain five stamina points. After a short chat over our drinks, we say goodbye to the chemist, leave the tavern and head north. Alright, that worked out great. Uh, we are back to 19 points of stamina, so we actually gained at least one point out of this whole mess. And we have done a charitable deed. Um, so, all in a day's work for a hero like us. Let's continue our travel and hope that this chemist doesn't get attacked again. Tower Street makes a sharp turn to the right towards the east, going east between tall buildings. An iron bridge crosses overhead between two of the buildings and we see movement on it. Small cloaked people carrying laden sacks between the buildings 
apparently in a great hurry are carrying laden sacks between the buildings apparently in a great hurry all right um probably these guys are are also robbers or pirates or whatever shifty creatures but uh, we can the only two options we have is either to to call out to them or walk under the bridge and continue east and we are no cowards like that so we have nothing to fear let's call out to them i we don't want to attack them necessarily it's just you know just let's say hi to them one of the small people stops and looks down at us he mistakes us for a town guard and calls out to his accomplices to run for cover then he points a short crossbow at us and fires a bolt. That's not nice. We didn't. We are not a guard, first of all, and we didn't. Uh, th th this city doesn't have such noble guards. Ha ha ha. And second, we did nothing to deserve this treatment. But anyway, our luck is at twelve, so we are guaranteed to be lucky. And we are. We dive to avoid the aim of the crossbow, and the bolt thuds into the ground at our feet, narrowly missing. Our would-be attacker curses before running into the building on our left. There does not appear to be an easy way to catch him, so we walk under the bridge and continue east. Well, we turned out to be a coward anyway, so I guess <coughs> this encounter was nothing but a loss for uh, a lock point. Um, but anyway, uh, at least no, s no, no further harm came to us. Let's see what else Tower, here Tower Street holds for us. And it seems nothing, because Tower Street ends at a junction where it meets Stable Street, running north and south. We decide to head north, right? Uh, so, probably we're a tiny bit further to the north from that bend where we decided to come this way. So, we are back on Stable Street. Hooray, this seems to be unavoidable or inevitable. Well, let's see what else, what Stable Street has to offer for us. To our left... We see a large wooden barn set back from the houses. Two horses are tied to a post outside the barn and smoke rises from a crooked chimney on top of its low flat roof. Right, this is stable street, so makes uh, makes sense to have a stable there. Uh, let's walk through the barn doors. Let's see what a stable in this, in this vile city has to offer. We soon realize that we are in a stable, surprisingly when we see a large, bare-chested man wearing a grubby white apron busy at work at an open fire. He takes a red-hot iron bar from the fire with his gloved hand and starts to hammer it into the shape of a horseshoe on his anvil. Sweat pours from his brow as he toils with the hammer. What would you like to do? Well, we, we get, <laughs> once again, we get the same two standard, kind of standard options to just leave him to his labors and leave uh, overall. To attack him for no good reason whatsoever. I saw. I thought we were supposed to be heroes, and this is definitely. Uh, at least it doesn't seem like an evil character. He's just a blacksmith. So we fortunately we have the third option to make conversation with him. So let's do just that. The blacksmith removes his gloves and wipes his hands on his apron before asking us what we want. We answer by asking if he makes anything besides horseshoes. He replies that in his spare time. He enjoys making chainmail coats. In fact, it has become quite a profitable sideline of his, especially in a horrible place like Port Black Sand. He tells us in great detail of the skill and labor that goes into making one and finally inquires if we are interested in buying one. They are not cheap. In fact, they cost 20 gold pieces a piece, but uh, we can afford this. And if it's half as good as, as the guy, uh, as this blacksmith uh, tells us it is, then it's actually a great investment. Let's spend half of our money. We have 37 gold pieces at the moment. Let's spend half of it uh, on a chainmail coat and let's see if it was worth it. The blacksmith takes our money and walks over to some bales of hay in the corner. He lifts one up and underneath it we see the chainmail coat. He turns to us and says, you have to hide everything in this place. You can't trust anybody. The coat fits perfectly and its workmanship, workmanship is excellent. While wearing it, we gain two skill points. This was definitely worth it. We have uh, currently have a skill level of 13, uh, meaning we 
automatically pass all skill checks and we probably are superior to most everything that this city can throw at us so this was definitely a, a trade worth doing uh, if you think about it we paid two gold uh, sorry 10 gold pieces for uh, one skill point this is a trade I'm always willing to make we happily leave the stables with our new armor and continue north right coming towards us as fast as he's able is a man in tattered rags with a ball and chain attached to his leg. He is exhausted and collapses in our arms. His face is dirty and unshaven. With great difficulty he manages to speak, saying, Please cut me free. The town guards are not far behind me. I have been locked in a dungeon for two years, but managed to tunnel my way out. I was robbed and unable to pay my taxes, so Lord Azur ordered. I should be jailed for five years. Please help me. Farther up the street, we hear shouting voices and then armed men come into view. All right. So it seems that we have a um, convicted guy, supposedly a convicted criminal, uh, literally in our hands. And we have two options, hand him over to the guards or cut through the man's chains with our sword. Let's do that. Uh, let's play the hero once again. We swing our sword with all our strength and bring it down on the heavy chain. Much to our surprise, it bounces off. Before we have time to try again, we are surrounded by four town guards who are pointing their pikes at us. Alright, um, we have two options. We can offer them a bribe to let us and the prisoner walk free, but um, unfortunately we don't have much money left and I'm not sure we can bribe four uh, uh, guards and if they take it in the wrong way, then we are in for a for a beating, so that's not uh, something I'm willing to uh, risk. Um, we might suffer wounds or, you know, pa pro possibly even die. I mean, these guards are, the town guards are quite formidable, and there are four of them. And for what? For for an escaped prisoner? We are heroes, but not that heroic. In fact, we are going to tell them we have caught the escaped prisoner for them. We tell the town guards that we are a bounty hunter. They seem pleased that we have caught their wanted man. The chief guard walks over to us and hands us five gold pieces saying, This murderer won't escape again. Here's your reward. He then rejoins the other guards who are busy chaining up the escaped murderer. We decide to head quickly north uh, in case the murderer tries to implicate us. Alright, we don't know if that's the truth, if he was really a murderer, but uh, it's like four words against one, uh, four people's words against ones, and besides, I don't think we had any other options, at the very least we earned some money, uh, 22 gold pieces current, uh, our current standing, and yeah, um, not very happy with this, but that's how life is in the City of Thieves. Let's leave this place real quick. On the right hand side, the houses are separated from the street by a wooden fence with shrubs, trees, bushes and flowers behind it. There is a turnstile in the middle of the fence, by the side of which is a sign reading Public Gardens, Entry Fee, One Gold Piece. Wow, the Sport Black Sand has a public garden. Amazing. Um, I wonder if it has a lotus flower. Whatever, one gold piece is one gold piece. It costs barely, barely anything, so we definitely wish to go into the gardens. We place the coin in the slot and walk through the turnstile. Although the flowers and, and shrubs are not outstanding, we are nevertheless surprised that such a place exists in Port Black Sand. The gardens are not very large, extending back some 60 meters to where some houses back onto them. There are two paths to follow, one of which runs round the edge of the gardens and one that leads directly into the center, where there is some topiary. Each shrub has been cut into the shape of an animal and we decide to take a closer look. The path leads into a small paved area surrounded by the animal-shaped shrubs. In the middle, there is a stone plinth upon which sits a large earthen bowl, bowl containing lotus flowers. There is a painted sign which reads, Do not pick the flowers. 
The gardener, however, is nowhere to be seen and there is nobody else about. Right. Do not pick the flowers. This is a, a, um, a plinth that, you know, the creator of, of which should be flogged for lack of style or, or rather bad style. And here are our lotus flowers. Okay, unfortunately we are going to break this small little rule because we need uh, one lotus flower precisely. So we need to pick this one. So we are going to risk picking one of the flowers and hope we don't get caught. As soon as we pluck one of the flowers, we hear the noise of rustling leaves. Three of the animal shaped hedges have uprooted themselves and are closing in on us. Okay, so this garden seems to have a, an automated defense system, but fortunately we have a ring of fire. We rub the jewel in the ring and point it at the leaf beasts. The leaf beasts are presumably the creatures that are attacking us. A blast of fire shoots out of the ring and burns a large hole in the nearest creature. It makes a whistling cry and backs away. We seize the opportunity and dash through their broken defense. We run to the turnstile clutching the lotus and make our escape into Stable Street. Right, that's great, that's awesome. First of all, we didn't lose anything where we kind of used up our uh, uh, ring of fire, Hope probably. I don't think it has more than one uh, charges. But uh, we avoided an, a battle. I don't think we... D well, we didn't destroy two of the defenders, that's for sure. I hope the third one also survived. I don't want others to pick these beautiful flowers. <laughs> uh, unfortunately, we needed it, so this was unavoidable. <coughs> and well now, at this moment, we have all the ingredients we need. We are only looking for the tattoo to be able to confront Zendar Bone. The street ends at a junction with Mill Street, which runs east and west along the city wall. Okay, so it seems that we have re reached the northern city wall. Hopefully we haven't skipped or missed the tattoo artists so far. Looking east, we see a group of town guards marching towards us and we decide to walk quickly west along Mill Street. That's a wise decision. On our left, we see a narrow lane and ahead, we see a young lad coming towards us pushing a barrow laden with fruit. Alright, we have two options walk down the narrow lane or buy some fruit. I think this is a uh, very easy uh, choice to make. We definitely don't want to confront the guards and uh, I doubt that they will follow us in if we walk into this alley, this lane. So let's walk down the lane. We don't need any, we don't need fruit anyway. So the, the alley, this lane might contain something useful for us. The lane ends at a small shop. On the glass paned door is painted a sign. Jimmy Quick Tint, best tattooist in town. Whew, we're in luck. A tiny bell rings as we push the door open and a fat man wearing purple silk smiles in greetings. We are surprised to see that his arms, hands, feet and even face, even his face, are completely covered in colorful tattoos. He grins and says, practice what you preach. We tell him that we require a yellow sun to be tattooed on our forehead with a white unicorn in the center of it. This is really silly. We're going to spend the rest of our existence, the rest of our lives here with that stupid tattoo on our, in the middle of our forehead. But what can you do? If you have a quest, you have a mission, and you have to do whatever it takes to succeed, right? He replies that it is a simple task, but it will cost us 10 gold pieces. And... Yeah. Ring and love. How smart. The things that are tattooed on his, on his uh, fingers. And he is truly full of tattoos. That's, that's amazing. Alright. We can afford his price. Uh, so let's pay him. He takes the money and motions for us to sit down on a wooden stool. After a long and painful process of repeatedly prickling our forehead with a sharp needle, he applies the indelible inks. We look in the mirror and find our new appearance somewhat strange, unsurprisingly. We shrug our shoulders and leave the shop. We then walk back up the lane and turn left into Mir Street. Right, so uh, at this moment we got everything. 
all we need to do is get out of this this dreadful city and uh, and yeah and that's it we <laughs> get out of here and and get to Zen Barbone's um, hideout and defeat him or eat um, I'm thinking that we are getting close to the end right here I guess so let's use up our provisions uh, I don't think much of anything is going to uh, come up here still for us so yeah let's use it up and let's see uh, how we can get out of this place we've seen more of it than we wanted kind of well we wanted to see everything and we've seen most everything that's for certain walking towards us along the street are two huge guards wearing the black uniform of lord azure as they get closer we see that they are trolls brutal mercenaries employed by lord azure as elite imperial guards i didn't know he was an emperor to our right there is a tree which reaches almost to the top of the city wall and yes they are truly ugly and don't look very sharp either oh sorry um, we could climb the tree in order to get over the wall, which is the cowardly option. We are not going to pick that. W we can also risk walking past the trolls, and we're going to do that. If they want to fight, then they're going to get one, and that's going to be a sad day for them. We try to walk nonchalantly past the trolls, but they suspect something odd about us and call us over to them. They ask us where we live and we reply that we are in Port Black Sand on a trading mission. They laugh scornfully and ask to see our pass, but we do not have any. We never managed to acquire one despite the, the, the recommendation of the gate guard at the beginning of our adventure, if you recall. So the larger of the two trolls tells us that we are under arrest for being in Port Black Sand without authorization. He tells us that he is feeling generous, however, and offers us a choice. We can pay a fine of all the gold in our backpack and be thrown out of the city, or spend a year with the rats and cockroaches in a dirty dungeon cell. The other troll bursts out laughing, saying, Generous? Ho ho ho! Ah, sour belly! You've got such a great sense of humor! Alright, once again we can take the cowardly way I'd pay. 11 gold pieces, that's all we have left, so we are, <laughs> we have almost run out of money by the end of our adventure. But what kind of a uh, choice would that be? Yeah. I mean, we are heroes, after all. We have a winged helmet, a majestic broadsword, and a chainmail coat over our, on top of our leather armor. Don't tell me that these trolls are stronger than that, uh, than a dragon slayer wearing all of this. Um, we are going to res resist the rest and rid the world of these two uh, evil creatures. We draw our sword and stand ready to fight the trolls. They seem pleased that we are going to give them a chance to practice their beloved sport of killing humans and advance towards us, swinging their battle axes. Sourbelly snarls and sta says, Stand back, fat nose, let me deal with this dog alone. First of all, I'm not a dog, and second, uh, Sourbelly seems to be the, the stronger one. He's definitely the taller one. So hopefully once we finish him, uh, his, his pal would run or, you know, at least the battle would be won over. And yes, Sourbelly is formidable with a skill level of 10 and a stamina of 11. Uh, he's, he's actually probably the strongest creature we have faced so far, but he's nowhere near, <laughs> near us, to be honest. So. Let's kill him. And I'm going to use, since he's quite formidable, I'm going to use a few luck trolls here. Alright. He hit us. That's fine. That's to be expected. He hit us again. I don't think he's going to murder us, but... Yep. That's why we are rolling against luck as well, so that we, uh, we definitely make sure we kill him. And yep. One last luck roll. And he's down. We have, de we have defeated su Sourbelly successfully and we must stand and fight Fat Nose. Or we could throw our shield at Fat Nose and attempt to escape. I, I don't f think that it's a good idea. We would probably lose some skill points and our defense. What for? Fat Nose should be the easier one to beat and this one wasn't difficult at all. 
Fat nose roars at us and charges forward. We raise our sword to defend ourselves. Well, nobody said Fat nose was smart. And right, his his stats are one point lower than than Sour Bellies were, one point respectively. So nine skill points and ten stamina points. This should be an easier fight. Not that the previous one was very difficult. Yep, he's just bleeding and <laughs> and. So far, he's only taken four hits and landed none. And he's dead. We have defeated both trolls. Our fight attracted a group of onlookers. Some of the beggars even cheered when we cut down old Sourbelly. But we noticed that one sly looking character sloped off with the obvious intention of finding more guards. It seems dangerous for us to stay here any longer, so we run off west along Mill Street, right? Uh, all right, I think this was a, a, a positive outcome anyway. We have defeated these two uh, evil guards, and uh, unless we get caught and you know we can get out of here, then we're all set. All we need to do really now is get out. So let's find the gate and get out of here. Behind us comes the sound of running feet. We look around and see a group of town guards chasing after us. As we stop to think where to run next, a boy runs out of a house and shouts, Follow me! We have no better plan in mind, so we run after him. Good idea. The boy races down to the bottom of Mill Street and turns left into Goose Street. He stops at a cart laden with hay and starts to talk frantically to a kind-faced old man, saying, Uncle, uncle, this brave person, person killed Sourbelly. We must help him to escape. The old man speaks calmly to the boy, saying, Indeed, we owe our friend a favor. Quick, jump into the cart. Here is the scene, and this guy really looks nice. And what's really interesting is that this supposedly city of evil or, or city of scoundrels actually has quite a lot of uh, nice people in them. So like the blacksmith at the, the, the stable, for instance, obviously Nicodemus. Uh, but there have been others too who have been generous and kind, so uh, the fishwives for instance, they're definitely not evil. I don't know what these people are doing here, but whatever. I trust him, not that we have any other options at the moment. We climb into the cart and cover ourselves with hay. We lie completely motionless as we hear the running guards approach. They stop to speak to the old Thatcher but he sends them running off down Goose Street. After they are gone, he whispers to us that he will take us to safety. We hear him climb onto the cart and urge his horse faster into a slow trot. The cart bounces noisily along the cobbled street, but we feel comfortable in the hay. The cart stops a few times and we hear questioning voices. About half an hour later, the cart stops again and the Thatcher calls out, you can come out now. We poke our head out of the hay and we are surprised to see that we are on the edge of a wood. To the west we can see the daunting shape of Port Black Sand. Alright, so this uh, old Thatcher actually fulfilled his promise. He clearly was a good character and he helped us escape Port Black Sand. So our mission is almost complete. We have all the necessary items required to slay the Night Prince. The Unicorn Sun Tattoo, a Silver Arrow, Lotus Flower, Hag's Hair and a Black Pearl. We have everything, everything at our disposal. Um, we have the Hag Hair, the... Mm, what else do we have? The Lotus Flower, the Black Pearl, the, tat the Tattoo and the Silver Arrow. So everything's here along with a bunch of other stuff. We still have our 11 gold pieces, our potion of fortune and everything else we need, would need. Um, I'm feeling confident about this. Let's take Zambarbo. Let's, let's take on Zambarbo. Let's destroy this evil creature. But only in our next video because I'm going to make the cut right here. Uh, with now that we have accomplished the second leg of our adventure, it seems, and only Hopefully only the third and final part remains, where we destroy uh, the Night Prince. I thank you all for watching, and I'll see you all next time. Bye-bye.